Hey, what's up YouTube for its own investing back with another video and today we're talking about five different reasons why you need an emergency fund. In today's tough economic climate and also with the pandemic, people are unsure of whether or not they're going to be returned back to their jobs or even if they're going to have a job at all. Unemployment benefits are also running out so soon those $600 weekly checks will be a thing of the past. And finally, with inflation, things are getting 3% more expensive every year so it's going to be tougher to pay for things in the future. So it's imperative now more than ever that you have an emergency fund to be able to cover those expenses so that way you don't have to go into high interest debt to be able to pay that off. So in today's video, we'll be talking about some facts and figures, five different reasons why you need an emergency fund, and finally, I'll leave you with some tips and some recommendations. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It helps out the YouTube algorithm, but more importantly, it shows that you like what I'm doing. So with no further ado, let's jump right into the video. So before we talk about five different reasons why you need to have an emergency fund, I was reading some really interesting articles last night that talked about how much money people actually have in their emergency funds and also how they would get the money if they were to occur an emergency expense. So we'll talk about that at this time. So I was reading an article published in The Atlantic which showed that 47% of the people that were surveyed would not have enough money to cover a $400 expense. They would either have to sell something or borrow the money from somewhere to be able to cover that expense. But I could understand with the state of the economy and people losing their jobs, them having a tough time covering a $400 expense. In 2018, these were the median household incomes for some major metro areas in the US. I live in the New York metro area and the average household income was 78,000, but if I lived in San Francisco, it would be almost 108,000. Even when people made more than the median household income, they still had a hard time raising money. This same survey found that when people made between 100 and $150,000, 25% of the responders said that they were unable to save $2,000 a month. This was an article published on CNBC which talked about how Americans would pay for a $1,000 emergency. Only 41% of people said they would have enough money to be able to cover the expense. Everyone else said they would either have to finance, borrow from another friend, reduce their spending, take out a personal loan, and 10% of people said they would have to do something else they didn't know or they refused to answer the question. And mind you, this article was published before the pandemic on January the 5th. With more than 50% of adults having less than $1,000 within their savings account, I think it's very important for people to invest in an emergency savings fund so that way they'll have that peace of mind so they won't have to incur high interest debt to be able to pay for those expenses that always seem to come at the most inappropriate times. One of the reasons why you'd want to have an emergency fund is in the event that you have children or pets. Once you introduce these into your life, your life can get a lot more expensive really quickly. Some common childhood emergencies include children falling and breaking bones, possibly accidentally swallowing something and then choking, having an allergic reaction, or having an asthma attack that won't stop. These can sometimes require a trip to the emergency room, which can get really expensive really quickly. Sometimes your pet can require emergency medical attention when it has eaten something poisonous, it's having seizures, it's fractured a bone, or is having severe nausea or diarrhea. I hope none of these things happen to your pets, but even when your pet requires routine vaccines and a checkup, it can easily run you a couple hundred bucks and a visit to the vet. Another reason why it's good to have an emergency fund is in the event of job loss. These are the unemployment rates for the 50 states as of last month, and the unemployment benefits are getting reduced down from $600 down to $200 according to the HEALS Act. In the unfortunate event that you've lost your job, I have some good news for you. I looked in at LinkedIn.com and found out that there's thousands of open positions right now at different kind of companies and different kind of industries. Most of these companies don't require an extensive uh, background or an extensive degree to be able to get these jobs. So these are some possible opportunities for you to get back on your feet. Another reason why you want to have an emergency fund is in the event that you had a medical emergency. There are some common conditions in the emergency room costs versus the urgent care costs for each one of those. Most of them are over $100 and some of them almost reach $700. Two winters ago, I had fallen on some ice and broken my wrist. I had to go to the emergency room where I had a splint placed. I also had some x-rays and some pain medication given to me. I walked out with almost a $700 bill. I'm thankful that I had an emergency fund at that time to be able to pay for that bill so that way I wouldn't incur any kind of debt. A fourth reason why you need to have an emergency fund is in the event that you need to repair your vehicle. There's almost 274 million cars in the United States, which means that there's almost a car for every person. For most of your routine car maintenance, you can usually get the jobs performed for less than $250. Some of your more expensive items include having to put a new transmission into the vehicle, having to drop a new engine in the car, 
your suspension system, your air conditioning system, such as if you had to get a new air conditioning compressor, catalytic converters, your exhaust system, and also your timing belt. Oftentimes these items cost more than $750 to have the work done on your vehicle. One of the most important reasons why you want to have an emergency fund is if you own a home. When you rent where you live, if you have a really good landlord, you can just give your landlord a buzz and say, hey, look, my roof's leaking or I need a new refrigerator and they'll get that replaced for you. But unfortunately, when you're a homeowner, the responsibility falls all on your shoulders. Typically, as your home ages and normal wear and tear occurs, things will need to be replaced. So I did find a website where it talks about the typical cost to repair different items in your home. The cheapest item on this list was to repair a door, and the price for that was around $200. The most expensive thing was to repair a roof, which was, which was around $6,000. Now, I do have some experience in this. I did have a roof replaced on my house, and it was around $8,000 to have that job done. One thing that would be more um, typical to our summertime season would be the HVAC unit. I couldn't imagine staying in a house without air conditioning and the typical cost to have that repair was around $300. So for me personally, I see that the emergency fund represents a strong foundation for your home. Now pictured above is a beach house and the kind of the house to me represents your normal financial activities, your retirement accounts, your Roth IRAs, your 403Bs, your 401Ks your normal stock investment accounts, and also the normal bills that you pay every month. And when an emergency comes, for example, like a hurricane that comes to take out your house, if you have a nice, strong emergency fund, i.e. a foundation, it won't take your house out. And you also won't have to invest in high interest debt to be able to pay off some of those emergencies that inevitably can occur. Another great thing about having an emergency fund is that you have the peace of mind that you'll be able to handle anything that comes your way. You'll still be able to invest in all of your investment vehicles. You'll still be able to pay your normal bills, and that way you can continue to build toward financial independence. These are some things that I did personally when I was starting out with an emergency fund. I went on Vanguard.com. These are just some frequently asked questions. So it says that you should have three to six months worth of expenses in your emergency fund, and you should also see how your emergency fund fits with your other goals. Finally, you should keep your emergency fund in a money market fund. I did that through Allied Bank, and I'll be able to show you kind of the different interest rates for different banks in the next coming slide. These are some different banks along with their interest rates. Personally, I use Allied Bank and it has a 1% annual percentage yield currently. All these banks are FDIC insured. In other words, if the bank goes under, your money is insured up to $250,000 and it's backed by the government. Now the APY or annual percentage yield is determined by the Federal Reserve. So in times like we're having right now, the interest rate is zero. So the annual percentage yield on savings accounts will be a little bit lower. So Vanguard recommends that you take a look at your personal budget and you budget for things like housing, food, healthcare expenses, utilities, transportation, personal expenses and debt. And then you take a look at some of the things that are maybe non-essential such as entertainment, dining out, non-essential shopping, vacations, and saving for a second home college in order to take care of those more important bills to build up that emergency fund first. An app that I love and personally use is called mint.com. Now it's available on iOS or Android and you're able to see your budget. So you're able to see where all your money's going to possibly save on some of the non-essential items like that dining out, that entertainment, and possibly put more towards your essential items. So that way you can start investing into your emergency fund to protect yourself from those emergencies that may occur. Some things that you can do to save some more money are to negotiate your plans, possibly with your insurance companies. Sometimes you may be using a premium that may not necessarily reflect all the services that you may need. So by cutting back on that, you can save some money. Also cutting cable is also non-essential and it can help you save a lot of money each and every month. And sometimes with your cell phone plans, you may be using too much or you may not need all the services of that plan. So that can also help you save some more money uh, for your investment budgeting. Cutting some of your unused subscriptions to possibly those meal kits, Hulu, Netflix, Disney Plus, and other streaming services, it can help you save a few more dollars every month. So I know it may be hard to save money with this pandemic going on, but if you save small amounts each week, it adds up really quickly. So if you save $25 a week, it adds up to $2,600 per year. If you save $50 a week, it adds up to $5,200 per year. And finally, if you save $75 per week, it adds up to $7,800 per year. Now, personally, I have $5,000 in my emergency savings fund through Allied Bank. It is my hope that you enjoyed the video today. If you found this video valuable, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. 
In today's video, we talked about five different reasons why it's important to have an emergency fund and also some tips that you can use to be able to save more money to contribute to your emergency fund. I want everyone to become financially independent and I feel like that by having an emergency fund, it's one of the first steps that you can take towards building that foundation towards financial independence. I want everybody to stay healthy out there, so please wear your mask and practice that social distance. I don't want anybody else to suffer demise from the illness. As always, please don't forget to keep getting that passive income. This is Fritz Jones Investing, and I'll catch you next time.